swordsman Harpocrates. I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> you spoke of making amends with Dion. But I can't imagine what for. Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam, and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in, well, everything an emperor should. History, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the Dragoons, his studies no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... <laughs> I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt, but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone. Until the day he could not bear it any longer. It is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. Then I beg that you bring me a wild wyvern tale. Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Where can I find this flower? And how will I know it? You have seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the colour. There is a waterfall in Rickmal's roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. I'll find you a wife and tail one way or another. Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe. Orsman, I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. <sighs> you did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... <laughs> it's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. Your Highness, would you do me the honor of accompanying me? No. It is time, then. <laughs> no. Only to the shelves. Our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Harpocrates. No. I dare not show my face before him. 
Not after everything I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives. And ruined countless more. All because I was weak. I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again, and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. Then that is all the more reason to do it. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself, and to him, how strong it truly is. I must, at the very least, offer him my gratitude. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. Even now, I hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. Master Harpocrates, pray, accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tale? Color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environments in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins, but once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, Your Highness. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. I want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Master Harpocrates. I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift. Until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm. For only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness. I shall await your return. Define us. No wonder 
my stepmother didn't like him. <laughs> For reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this. not for you. I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Not to mention the wives and tales. I shall plant their seeds that I might not disappoint His Highness upon his return. I hope the soil in the hideaway is to their liking. Why, these flowers bloomed in the bleak black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. When it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A Stolas quill. Or more precisely, my Stolas quill. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day, you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes, I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber. <laughs>